one of their scientists contacted me and said, do you think this thing is real? Is it going to be an issue? And I said, not only is it real, I need you to start running simulations right now. And it hit so fast and so globally, and it spread so fast. The early stages of this pandemic were challenging, unlike anything we've ever seen in healthcare before. It became very real, very fast in the Seattle area for the physicians that practiced emergency medicine. We really didn't know what we were putting on the line in caring for these patients. This was going to be a situation that we will have to deal with. It was a completely new world for all of us. Everybody came up with some system that they thought worked for them. And there was ignorance. We were all inventing it on our own early on. The emergency medicine community really wasn't sure what's the best evidence, what's the right way to treat our patients. Nobody knew anything about it. So a lot of it was troubleshooting. And I think that's what emergency medicine does well. We troubleshoot well. ASAP immediately responded by creating a place for physicians to exchange ideas and communicate. And that was the ASAP Engaged Bulletin Board on the ASAP website. The Engaged platform became the first point where people gravitated. And we opened that up to beyond just a membership. And we started getting an influx of people joining that, sharing their stories, sharing their clinical experience, sharing their best practices, how they were troubleshooting the patients they were seeing. And we're talking thousands and thousands of posts that were coming in every day. And that in itself, in a week, became 200 pages long. People were like, okay, now this is becoming too much. Now, I don't want to hear anything of a month ago. I need something now. Like, where are we now? So everything that was feeding into the COVID field guide was based off of publications, lectures, webinars, news, federal regulation updates, clinical updates. The first iteration of the field guide was created in 12 days. All of a sudden, this group had something to catalyze their efforts. And they all knew that everybody in the world was watching and waiting and hoping that there would be um, you know, good tools to help the provider community treat COVID. That became our mission, to get people what they need, where they need it, because they're the ones on the front line dealing with this. And we made sure the format was mobile friendly and desktop friendly. It was on my phone. It was a link on my phone. I could click on it and open the chapter that I wanted. It was handy, it was accessible, and very, very usable. The indexing was really nicely done. It's very easy to read and tabbed. You don't have time to scroll through the entire document to find what you need. To actually have a toolkit field guide that gave us easy solutions that we could put into place right away was pivotal. Absolutely pivotal. In the heat of the moment, I need a solution right now. It sort of brings the expertise of the country's leading experts into the room with you when you have a COVID patient. Participating in the field guide is one of the things that I'm most proud of in my career. My most significant contribution was the section on the efficacy and safety of high flow oxygen therapies in respiratory failure due to COVID. I believe it was the air transport team from the EMS department who was like, hey, we want to write a section on air transport of COVID patients and how do you safely do that without cross-contamination? So we were trying to pull in wherever we could. That JPS was like, oh, we're doing something unique. We can address this gap. How do they triage their COVID patients? And that's where facility changes came into being. We re quickly realized that the flow through the ED and the protocols that we had in place um, was not going to work with a disease that potentially was going to be airborne or droplet. And we even started constructing tents before tents became a thing. So triage, instead of being based on just acuity, was based on infectious versus not, and are you sick or are you not? So it was a really interesting change in how we sort and triage patients. And I think in the end, it worked out really nicely for, for our patients. But it's not just help people in the U.S. I can trace it to so many lives and so many people who have used that information in parts of the world that would never have access to this information. It's still being used globally till this day, which is why we continue to update the content and make sure it's as accurate as possible. Independently, I believe we're up to five different languages that it's been translated to and been accessed in over 160 countries. So we didn't want that to limit it. We just wanted to make sure it was available online free for anybody who wanted to read it. I saw my, my friends and my colleagues 
doing their duty going into the hospitals, many of them sleeping in hotels separate from their families because they didn't want to risk their families being exposed. And I was just honored to be able to be involved because I felt like it was a way that I could be contributing to the emergency medicine community and helping my colleagues. This project was beyond innovation. Um, this is the first document of its type and I loved the ability to update and read it real time um, and how wonderful that we could benefit from the experiences of other leaders and other departments. Watching each other's back, the, I thought we were the epitome of teamwork, but the, the pandemic only made us stronger in that respect. It helped us feel like we're part of a team. It helped us feel um, like we were contributing to the solution. Um, it helped deal with the emotional toll that COVID took on all of us as frontline workers. And um, if you worked on this, um, you really contributed to the solution. One of the great benefits of ASAP in general in this project really exemplifies it is the ability to create collaboration and relationships that build on one another and let us be something bigger than we are. It's helped so many people and I don't think or they'll be able to truly understand I can ever say put into words how much impact this had. Yes, thank you. <laughs>